Hello and welcome to this screencast. We're going to look at deploying CloudStack on Google Compute Engine or the AWS Cloud using Revelo Systems. Revelo Systems enables us to bring up virtual machines on the Amazon Cloud or Google Compute Engine that have VTX technology. This means they can do nested virtualization, which means we can run KVM or VMware ESXi on them. So over here in my browser window, we have the Revelo web interface loaded. At the moment, we're not going to worry about this too much. All we need to do is create a SSH key pair that will be used to log into our virtual machine. So if we come over to the library, or we go down to key pairs, we can now create a key pair. I've already done this, so for the sake of this video, I'm not going to bother doing it again. You see my key pair here is called Revelo. Next, we're going to use a utility for creating instances on the Revelo Cloud. Now, if you just Google Revelo Python SDK, you should get brought to this GitHub project. If you do pip install Revelo SDK, you'll get the necessary command line tool to create the virtual machines. So let's head over to our command line and execute the required command. So it's Revelo create nodes. The first parameter I have here, minus C4, that's the amount of cores I want in the VMs. Minus N is the amount of memory, so I have eight gigs of memory. Or is the disk size. The network is gonna be 192.168.0.0 with a 24 cider, so I have 254 usable addresses. And um, the VMs that I bring up will have a public IP, so it will be accessed through security groups on the outside. The VMs are going to be based on Ubuntu 1404. Uh, the Revelo account is screencast at enw.ie. And the key pair I want on the virtual machines is Revelo. So if I go ahead and type in my password, it should go ahead and create the two virtual machines on the Revelo cloud for me. Okay, so the application has been published and all VMs have been started. If we come back over to the Revelo cloud, Revelo Systems web UI, we'll see that we now have an application listed. We see in this application that we have two VMs. And if we come over to network, we should see that these VMs have an IP address. So the VM0 has a static IP address of 192.168.0.10. And VM1 has a static IP address of 192.168.0.11. One of these VMs will act as our Cloud Stack Management Server. The other will act as our KVM hypervisor. After some time on the summary page, this VM start in will change to VM started, and then using this DNS address, we'll be able to log into the VM over SSH. You can see up here on the Revelo web UI that our VMs are published on the Google Cloud. So let's just give these a moment to start up. Okay, we can see that the VM is now started. So I'm gonna pick VM0, and we're gonna go ahead and configure this virtual machine. So I'll go SSH, Revelo is the default user account, we'll give it the host name, and we'll point it to the private key of the SSH key pair that I created earlier. Okay, we can type yes to this, and we're logging into the virtual machine. We'll get root access. Okay, now this virtual machine is going to act as our cloud stack management server. So we need to set up the cloud stack app get repos. Um, I'm going to disable the firewall and app armor just for ease of use purposes. Then we need to install MySQL, cloud stack management server, FS, do some configuration to create an NFS share of secondary storage. Oh, then we should be good to go. On our other box, we will install the KVM hypervisor. So let's start off by creating our app get repo file. So I'll just echo a line into app sources list.d with cloudstack.list. It's just the shape blue cloudstack repos. I'll go ahead and grab the shape blue package key and add it in. And I'll do an app get update. I'll go ahead and remove app armor. So I'll just stop its process and remove it from startup. 
I'll disable the UWF firewall. And finally, I'll go ahead and install all the required packages. So this includes the Cloudstick Management Server, the NFS Server, and MySQL. Press yes on that. And it'll take a few moments to download all the required packages. Okay, all the necessary packages on our management server are installed. Now we go ahead and configure a few things as outlined by the CloudStack documentation. So the first thing is MySQL. Just create a CloudStack configuration file. Um, again, this is in the CloudStack documentation. Just copy and paste it in. Um, we'll restart MySQL. We can go ahead and deploy the CloudStack database using the command CloudStack setup databases. We'll do it with the user. We'll set the CloudStack user to be cloud with a password of the password. And we'll do it on localhost, which is where the MySQL server is running. The deployment user will be root, so we'll pass a switch argument to deploy as. And we'll do root with password password. We'll go ahead and create all our database tables and the database is deployed awesome and um, next we need to set up secondary storage so we'll make a directory to contain this so we'll go export slash secondary we need to add some configuration to etc exports to expose this nfs share so go ahead and echo in that line there We'll run export fs to enable the NFS shares. And just to be sure, we will restart the NFS service. Lastly, we need to download the system VM for the KVM hypervisor. I'm just gonna grab this off the shape Blue repositories. We'll just go ahead and do simple wget. Okay, our system VM template has finished downloading. We can go ahead and install it using the cloud install SYS template command. Uh, we give a few arguments, tell what the secondary storage is, what the file name is, what hypervisor it's for, and lastly, the database credentials. Okay, the system VM template has finished installing. We can go ahead and start our cloud stack management management service um, it'll pop in a moment and now I have not enabled any security rules for 8080 so for the sake of the screencast we're just gonna tunnel over SSH in order to get access to the VM so we can go ahead and create a board in on SSH at the moment um, We'll go from localhost 8080 to localhost 8080. While I'm doing that, I'm also going to create one so we can access the MySQL database that's installed on this server. So from localhost 2306 to localhost 2306. Okay, so if we come over to our browser, and navigate to localhost client. Okay, here's the login page. You can go ahead and log in with admin and password. We've used CloudStack before, so we can skip this guide. And what I want to do is I want to enable local storage for all the service offerings and system VMs. So we'll do system VMs first. So just come up to global settings. I search for local. And it's the last option here. Uh, system.vm.useLocalStorage. We'll just set that to be true. Now, the service offerings are a little bit trickier. If I come over to the disk offerings, I can't actually edit any of these. So what I'll do is we'll just go straight into the database to edit them. So I'll open up my favorite SQL client. We'll connect to a database on localhost, because remember I port forwarded it earlier. I'll just type in our credentials. We go up to choose database, we can go down to cloud. 
we can search for the table of disk offering and all we will do is change the use local storage from 0 to 1 Okay, we'll go ahead and restart the management server. Okay, that's restarted and ready to go. So what we need to do now is we need to configure the other VM which will act as our KVM hypervisor. So we'll go back over to the Revelo Systems web UI and we'll get the IP address of the other VM, so that's VM1. So we can copy that down, we can open up a new terminal window, and we can just SSH into this VM again. I'll give it my SSH private key. and we should get access like we did before. Now this machine is going to act as our KVM hypervisor, but I do need to do the same things that I did on the management server earlier, so that is add the cloud stack repos and disable app armor and disable the UFW firewall. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. It's again, it's the same commands as earlier. So just add, create the cloud stack list file download the key for the repositories, I do an apt-get update I stop the app armor service and I remove it from startup and I disable the firewall okay now we can do our installation of the packages that we need on this box we need two packages on this box. They are the cloud stack agent and bridge utils. So I can install them with apt-get. Just go ahead and press Y and we'll download all required packages. Okay, all required packages are installed. We'll go ahead and run some commands that will configure KVM as required by cloud stack. We'll restart the KVM service. And lastly, we need to enable SSH access via passwords. We'll just open up the SSH configuration file and find the required action. So we we'll have permit root login and we want to use password based authentication. We'll go ahead and restart the SSH service and set a password for the root account. Okay, so we are ready to go. If we come over to our browser, go to localhost 8080 for host client. We get our cloud stack login screen. We log in with admin and password. We go to I've used cloud stack before, skip the guide. We come over to our infrastructure page and go to zone. And we can add a new zone. It's going to call it Revelo Cloud. We'll use Google DNS. We'll use the internal Revelo Cloud DNS. We'll set our hypervisor to KVM. And we'll tell it to use local storage. We don't need to do any configuration on the network. It's fine for our needs as default. We'll create a new pod. Um, the pod is the same gateway as the management server. So 192.1.3.0.1. It's on the same network. So 255.255. .255. Five six zero for the net cost is fine. We'll give it from thirty to sixty for the IP addresses for the system VMs. Again, the guest network is on the same network, so one hundred two one six zero one is fine for the gateway. Um, two five five two five five six zero is fine for the net mask. We'll give it from dot one hundred to dot two hundred for the guest network. Create a name for our cluster and we will add our KVM host. So our KVM host is running on 192.168.0.11. 
uh, the login to the machine with root and the password. Okay, so we need to add our secondary storage. So we're using NFS for that. Uh, we'll add a name. We add the server 1.0.1.0.10, so same as our management server. And we give it the path, which is export secondary. We go ahead next and hit launch zone. Okay, our zone creation is completed. We would like to enable the zone. Okay, so our zone is set up, ready to go. If we come back over to the infrastructure page and go into system VMs, we should see our system VM starting up. Okay, we can see that our two system VMs have come online. If we come over to the templates page, we can see we have a CentOS 5 file template. If we come over to the zones tab, we can see that it's 88% download. We'll wait until this template is installed and ready to go, and then we can create a new instance based on it. Okay, our template is downloaded and ready, so we can go ahead and create a new instance. Come over to the Instance tab, hit Add Instance. We'll select our zone, we'll select the one template. We select the CentOS 5 file template. We'll make it a medium instance. We don't want any disk offering. We'll set the network for the default security group. And we'll just confirm that all our settings are okay. They are. So we can go ahead and launch our VM. Our VM should come up in a few moments, uh, but while it is doing that, I'm going to be wanting to be able to access the console um, as that web interface. This console talks to the console proxy system VM which is running on 192.168.0. something. I'm not able to access that on my current network as I don't have access to that network range. So for the sake of this video and just for easy demonstration purposes, we're going to do a SOX proxy over SSH just so we can access the same network that the system VMs are on. So we'll come over to my terminal window the management server is running on. And we'll just go ahead and create a new dynamic proxy for localhost 3000. Okay, and I'll just go into my operating system settings and set a proxy for SOX proxy localhost 3000. Okay, so we come back to our instances tab and we see that our instance is starting. Okay, so we can see our instance is now running. If we come over to the quick view, hover over it, and we click on the view console button. We can see our VM booting up. Okay, our VM has successfully started. We can log in with root and password. And I can just prove that we have network activity by pinging Google public DNS. And we do. So that is the end of the screencast. We have a full cloud stack basic deployment with KVM running on the Google Compute Engine Cloud thanks to RovelloSystems.com. Thank you very much.